thought you could get me, but I bested you. You fool. I... Fire? You're not supposed to... Uh-oh. <laughs> I died again. <laughs> you failed the captain. I didn't fail anything. It was all part of the plan, man. This is how it was supposed to go. Come back to sci-fi Timber Taft. No! What's up, man? I got this new game for you to try out. It's called The Surge. The Surge? Yeah! Ugh. One copy of The Surge. There we go. It's just like Dark Souls. It's just like Dark Souls, dude. The Surge is like Dark Souls! <laughs> it's just like Dark Souls. Oh boy, Timber Taff, what do you have for us today? Some kind of Dark Souls wannabe? Some kind of Chinese knockoff brand sensation that's sweeping the nation? Some kind of clone? Well first, listen up kid, maybe you don't know how the creative industry works. Because whether you're making a video game or, you know, running a YouTube channel, you're probably going to be waking up one morning with a cup of coffee in your hand, watching the funnies on YouTube, when all of a sudden you go, man, what if I just did that, but better? Is it not an unfair comparison if we're looking at what is essentially fan work and saying, can it live up to the inspiration, to the person who had years of experience and who has a full team of developers who've done this before? Now generally the Dark Souls fan base is fine, but you have to admit that it's a little bit annoying when your game has such a prevalent impact on the industry that at some point or another the entire community just starts using it to represent everything. This game is the Dark Souls of fighting games. This game is the Dark Souls of 90s games. Of course, in almost every case, what makes most of these games similar to Dark Souls is one tethering feature. They are... hard. They crush your spirits, run their laundry, watered in your blood, and take joy in seeing your controls soaring across a room like a bird with the spatial awareness of a rubber ball. But no, the surge isn't like that. The surge isn't just hard. The surge deviates from that commonality by not only being difficult, but also by making your character move with the same arthritic lethargy of its inspiration, plotting similar courses through similarly unsettling and perplexing labyrinthian, horizontally depraved and vertically spacious set pieces, sniffing around the room of a world looking for something, anything resembling a plot to connect the dots. Pound for pound, there is no denying that the Surge meticulously recreated all of these things, all the while throwing caution to the wind and saying, that's a very nice Minotaur you got there, Dark Souls, but do you think that it could take on the Mark II PAX next generation mech with its titanium crusted plating, engine propelled arm blades and fan firing 15 count missile launcher? It looks like your Minotaur can't even handle a tiny man with a sword poking at its toes. I think we all know who would win this fight. That's right. The bridge. Now some of you, perhaps even most of you, clicked on this link looking for a review of the game, so let me clear that out of the way for you so you have it easy to digest in the first couple minutes and then you can be on your merry way. I like the game. I do. From a raw gameplay perspective, it's everything Dark Souls was, but with a few added improvements. Uh, now you have the ability to store your bits in case you wanted a Bitcoin bank, now you have it inside of a video game. Congratulations. Now I don't have a conversion calculator for you, but it is essentially the same thing as the Souls in Dark Souls, so think of it as a, a soul bank. Man, that doesn't sound right. And unlike Dark Souls, your bank doesn't care when you die, so you keep all those bits, making the game, in my opinion, a little bit easier than Dark Souls. Not by a, not by a lot, but at least your deaths don't hurt as much. I have over 2,000 souls. Get back to the bonfire! No! 
game also has executions, and while I know that that sounds bad, you have to understand they have a very good reason for it. The executions make it so that you can actually defeat enemies before you end up in that awkward moment where you're at low health, so is your enemy, and they suddenly decide that they know kung fu and pummel your smug face into the dirt, brick, fecal matter, whatever it is that you find yourself characteristically trudging through. Also, the Surge benefits from being released in 2017, which means instead of being several shades of sepia tone, it actually has color. Wow. I also feel the actual bosses in the Surge are better than in Dark Souls. Now, don't get me wrong, Dark Souls has crazy designs. I mean, like, what? Fighting in Dark Souls, though, always left a little bit to be desired when it came to the bosses, because it was mostly just waiting until they finish doing whatever their move is, part of their cycle, then you go in, you stab them in the toe, the ankle, uh, maybe stab them in other parts of the body that I'd rather not speak of. Then you rinse and repeat until they go, oh no, and fall to the ground and then disintegrate or whatever it is demons get up to these days. Comparatively, the Surge's bosses are more of a puzzle. You go in and they may potentially have a certain pattern that you have to follow, but usually the way that you take them out is a lot more creative than just going up and hacking at them. I mean, it, it, it does essentially boil down into some kind of hacking of one form or another, but you gotta be clever. They do some different stuff too. Playing the game scratches the Dark Souls itch, and if for some reason you're breaking out in hives because you haven't had Dark Souls in a while, then this, in a sci-fi setting, is going to deliver on its promises and you will be satisfied. However, all players need to understand that there is a certain magical element of Dark Souls that is not present in the Surge, and as a result, the game will feel as though it is hollow. What was it that made Dark Souls so magical? Is it the part when you first step into the main keep and you see a mouse wearing a blue hat dancing with a bunch of brooms around? That's not right. Look, the magic of a good video game is not intrinsic to the fantasy setting. You can still have magic in a sci-fi world. I can enjoy a good romp through Fallout or Mass Effect just fine. The heavy lean away from the alien side of sci-fi towards a more stompy mech future isn't really a problem either. I love the way the mech warrior presented its mechs. There was magic in the design of those things that made them unique, interesting, and something that I wanted to be real, but unfortunately that never came to pass. When you first set foot in Hollow Bastion, uh, no, wrong game. When you first set foot in the Undead Burger, you already are having your senses overloaded with possibilities. You land on a tower after being carted there by a giant murder-everything raven and are given a few cliffs faces bristling with jutting rocks, castle walls, and a winding castle structure open to your visual pores. Oh sure, you can't see exactly how you're going to climb the castle, and it's all obfuscated really, but the goal is set for the player before a word is ever uttered. There are a myriad of good games that do this. Nier Automata, Zelda, Dark Souls, being able to see where you're going before you ever set foot there is really just a, a footnote to a good game these days. You catch them on Drift, Silent Hill, with your fog? Maybe you should just, you know, get rid of that so that I can actually beat your game. We're going to the Mickey D's right now. As you can clearly see, at the end of the street, we got a Mickey. Uh, do you see it? Nah, I don't see it, man. Turn up the, tr tr just turn up the, like, uh, draw distance. Turn up the draw distance? Yeah, like, you know, the thing that lets us see, like, further. You're off your meds, man. No, dude, you just gotta crank the draw distance. See, oh, it's already at max. This is real life, man. We're at maximum draw This is in vivo. We can't even see there the end no of the street, distance. dude. There is no draw distance. What do you mean there's no draw distance? It's not a thing. Just walk closer. When you get close to it, you'll see walk it. Walk closer, dude. This is a terrible game. This is like a this zero out of five. Like it doesn't even let me see the destination. That's ridiculous. You gotta make walking to the corner a game. I don't need your sass, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, You're I think supposed to back you me up. You should get here. help. You are my boy. I we're supposed to be. We're, boys, we're man. not though. Not anymore. We not after away. this. Cause I don't. I don't want to be your boy. You stay in this sucky simulator. It's all yours. I, I thought he was my boy. Now I admit the amount of time I spent looking at outdoor vistas in the Surge was pretty minuscule. During that time, though, I can't name a single place that I've been to that had any 
distinct characteristics. I'm in the desert. Sand is a landmark, I guess? Welcome to Boxland. We make blue boxes within big rooms designed to hold said boxes. Only at Creo. Boxes and more boxes. I can only name a couple of times where I kind of had landmark vistas in the game. The first one that I can recollect happens in level two, and it's something so cool that I would rather not spoil it for you, so you'll know it when you see it. It's in level two, go look it. You'll, you'll know. The only other time I can think of happened in level one, and in, uh, for better or for worse, it was an underground hallway full of baddies that was a complete featureless black void where nothing was visible. It was bleak, dripping with atmosphere as well as fluids I'd rather not know the origins of. The uncertainty of that black chamber evoked all of the feelings of claustrophobia and fear of the unknown that even horror games like Amnesia rarely tapped into for me. And then around this time is when the game calls me an idiot for not knowing that I had a flashlight and I could just see. Come back, turn the power on, and bam. Memorable set pieces become your run-of-the-mill factory sewer hallway. That's fine. I didn't find it immersive or anything. No, please, get rid of it. The levels are designed to encourage exploration. They're intricate, they avoid linearity, and make it feel rewarding whenever you unlock a new shortcut or finally find the dang stairs in the far-flung corner of Box Factory Land. Who put these here? Despite doing all this right, without set pieces, it may as well have been a literal maze with no textures or sci-fi set dressing, and it wouldn't have been negatively or positively impacted at all. Mind you, this doesn't make The Surge a bad game, or even relegate it to being an okay game, since being called okay in the video game industry is the kiss of death. But... Despite having sci-fi robots everywhere, the game is mostly grounded in what I'd perceive as the near future. We're talking like, you know, 50 years from now, Coca-Cola is going to invent a four liter bottle and we'll all die. There may be other games I'm not thinking about that fit that bill, but one that I can compare pretty easily is Half-Life, a game that I feel suffers from some of the same problems The Surge is currently experiencing. For the two of you who have never played Half-Life before, in Half-Life you play the role of a man known as Gordon Freeman. A scientist guy who may or may not enjoy his job, but regardless, he works inside of a deep underground laboratory facility known as Black Mesa. Sounds like a pretty fantastic place for some delicious Mexican cuisine. And Black Mesa's great! Just kidding, it's not. It's a factory with dangerous chemicals and boxes everywhere. It would be about as crapsacky as it would be in real life to work there. Despite being in a similar kind of factory environment, what do I remember about the level design? Well, there was a big robot swimming in a chemical spill when I was riding the tram ride all the way into the center, and, uh, well, there was that one receptionist desk, I guess, because that they don't do those in games much. I mean, the game had a few set pieces here and there, but overall, I think I spent more of my total playtime going through school cafeteria-esque hallways, corporate offices, and box plague warehouses. It captured the monotonous, dull, and uninspiring oppression of being in a common workplace so well I remember those areas as well as I would the meat room of a grocery store. Yeah. This is a room, all right. Is it break time yet? This memorability issue does make me wonder if maybe the problem with these games is just being set in a modernish setting in general. Is the familiar just so omnipresent in our day-to-day -day life that to see it recreated in any other form would make that form seem uninspired simply because of how ordinary it is? The only other instance I can think of where this type of environment was memorable was the Stanley Parable, and that game was intentionally trying to replicate the unmemorable aspect of those areas in other games and somehow failed to in itself suffer the same fate. Listen, I bring up Half-Life and these other games in so much detail because I honestly believe it is a fairer comparison than trying to have this be Dark Souls with robots. This cannot be made any clearer than when comparing bosses between the games. In Dark Souls, even though not every boss is given a reason for being, the way they are designed is so lovingly crafted and their placement in the world is so thought out that each instance of maddening death gives a feeling of reluctant acceptance that, oh, of course I died, just look at it. Is that something you would survive? I mean, how is this thing even alive? The designs are imaginative and the holes in the plot that are left are easily filled by the player's imagination. I don't know if any in-lore text ever explained what the gaping dragon is, but judging by the dragon body, head, and huge go cry in a corner tube filled chest cavity stretching the entire football field, I'm gonna guess this dragon is no longer really alive. It's probably some kind of zombagon, and it's probably corrupted by some bad voodoo. 
As I've stated before, all the bosses in the Surge are mechanically more engaging and entertaining than those in Dark Souls. They're true puzzles that require deliberate actions for me to take down, rather than being just pure timing. Despite being resoundingly better in its gameplay, the bosses mean less to me overall. Pax is a defense robot, so he's defending. Firebug is a decontamination bot, and he's decontaminating. While they fit within the sci-fi machine lore well enough, they don't have any qualities to themselves that help make them anything more memorable than a set-piece boss fight. This isn't a criminal offense. If compared to Half-Life, I'd say the bosses are on par, if not better, than what are presented in that game. In the same fashion, it is a mechanically memorable game. I remember the feeling of crushing an enemy I met with my hammer far more than where it happened or why it happened. In Half-Life, I remember getting past the tentacle and the feeling of outsmarting weird aliens I encountered with barrels and being in a place that couldn't reach me with my first-person platforming skills. In Dark Souls, it was all about the sights, man. Come visit Blight Town. Witness its wondrous ability to maintain structural integrity despite years of decay. All these games have striking similarities, yet the memorable aspects of the ensemble games themselves are completely different from one another. The environments of Dark Souls evoke emotion. I don't know if a game has ever made me feel the emotions of depression and sympathetic disgust before Dark Souls. The Surge is a good game, but if you are looking for a game that expands how you feel about the world, or that gives you insight into the human condition, or that has a grander purpose than to be a video game designed for pure entertainment, you would likely want to look elsewhere. The Surge is about the feeling of adrenaline. You feel triumph for crushing your enemies, but neither the environments, setup, characters, or situations evoke any other emotions beyond that. I guess the best way of looking at these games is seeing what they set out to do. Dark Souls' goal was to make players fail in order to grow and improve. It threw players into a grim situation, one so oppressively overpowering that it would drive a player to go, everything here sucks, let's go someplace else. And if they fail, they'll go, I really don't want to stay here. Let's try again, and eventually they'll make their way out of whichever horrifically gross and terrifying zone they might be in at the time. Little did the players realize that uh, the Undead Asylum was birthday cake and rainbows compared to the other places they'd end up. By copying the fundamental mechanics of Dark Souls, the Surge should have the same goal. It fulfills it, and yet, in a twist that makes it almost poetic with how literally these games represent this, where Dark Souls has bodies, souls, and demons to fill the void between the player and the game mechanics, the Surge sticks to those mechanics so rigidly that it feels like the game itself moves with the same clattering, mechanical feeling as the machines and mechanically infused ghouls that exist within its world. Hey there everybody, thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this one in the future. I also have a Patreon, which you can go and donate to if you want to support me that way, or you can be part of the community actively by being in my Discord or watching my Twitch streams. Both links are available in the description as well. And that's all I've got time for. See you guys next time.